Welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and our guest today is directly from the European Bamboo Expo in Dortmund, Germany, Nicola Kasparek from Casa Congo. Hi. Uh, hi, Nicola. Uh, so your mission is to build bamboo homes, economies, and communities. And uh, we have uh, three um, main topics on this podcast. The first one being the bamboo adobe panel systems. The second one, the financial aspects of the Kuna case study. And the third one, the development of the local bamboo supply chain. And of course, hopefully we have some time to talk a little bit about the current European Bamboo Expo here in Germany, where you are. We see your background. Seems pretty busy. <laughs> How's everything? <laughs> It's great. I uh, just got to the expo two hours ago. Um, thanks for having me on the podcast, JJ. Uh, good to be here. Well, thanks for your time. I know you're super uh, busy for sure there. And uh, I really appreciate that you have time to also quickly uh, uh, share uh, your insights or your experience uh, with the people who probably are not able to be at the expo. So uh, again, thank you also there. Um, so um, I don't know, uh, maybe... Uh, we could just start and and uh, you you tell me a little bit about uh, Casa Congo, um, how you got there. Um, would be really interesting because it's it's quite uh, 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 another reality, right? You're from uh, Europe, from the Netherlands, if I'm right or wrong. No, I'm from Milan, actually, based in Italy. Milan, um, Italy. Ah, yeah. awesome. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, sorry. I'm, all good. All good. All good. I'm I'm Italian American, but I followed my, my best friend to Nicaragua in 2017, and we founded a sustainable development hub. And our mission is to empower local communities for sustainable development. So we provide skills, tools, uh, resources, and, and training programs to launch local social enterprises. Um, in the last seven years of Casa Congo, we've run four programs successfully. One is focused on transforming plastic waste into art. One is focused on sustainable agriculture. Um, one is on ocean conservation, and then last but not least, our bamboo design and construction program, uh, where we focus not on giving people homes, but giving people the skills and tools for them to build their own homes, leveraging this amazing material called bamboo, um, which is regenerative, it's light, it's strong, um, it enables fast assembly, and um, I'm really excited to be here actually to see what other people in the world are working on when it comes to bamboo. Um, our prototypes in Nicaragua started three years ago when it comes to bamboo housing construction, and we've come a long way. So um, look forward wow. to telling you more about it on the session. Awesome. And um, if I recall correctly, you have a presentation here at the Expo, too. You're going to uh, present uh, Casa Congo? Yeah. Tomorrow morning at, uh, I believe, 6.30 p.m., we're going to present our case study on Kuna. So uh, Kuna is the fourth program I mentioned at Casa Congo, which is around building bamboo homes for everyone. Kuna in the ancient Mayan Yucatec means house of nature. Um, and we'll be talking about uh, that tomorrow here in Dortmund. Awesome. And um, um, basically, um, your setup uh, um, or your organization is a nonprofit or, or how's your... Um, What's your setup? How do you operate there? We started as a nonprofit, um, but ultimately our mission is to hand over all our programs to local communities and effectively make ourselves redundant from the, from the operation. So we start as a philanthropic fund, but then we start local social businesses. So we, as I said, we'll create the infrastructure, invest in the skills and tools, and then enable groups of local people to form teams uh, and run social businesses, um, which can generate revenue from a local and international marketplace, um, as well as uh, providing ongoing, at that point, mentorship. So the Bamboo Housing Program is an interesting case because um, Saul and, and myself, Saul is my co-founder from Nicaragua, we were very hands-on when we built the first home. We call it La Casa Modelo. It was the first prototype. We had to set up the whole bamboo supply chain, get bamboo approved in the local building code, work with the farmers, create the treatment facilities, prefabrication workshop. But once we built the first one and we were able to channel funds towards um, this community, the local people self-organized and autonomously kept building homes on their own. Um, oh. And so now we have spun off 
this bamboo construction initiative to be its own social business um, run and, and managed by local community members across the supply chain. So we, we started it as an NGO and now it's become more of a hybrid social enterprise um, to, to keep uh, pursuing its purpose and growing. Beautiful. That's really a, a, a smart approach if it works, of course. Um, but uh, being three years in the... <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> That's the important part, right? I mean, I, in the long term, probably it will show how um, how how uh, uh, this works well. Three years is good. Um, hopefully in 10 years, it will grow more. Um, and um, I, I, for sure, there are challenges like identifying local people who, who want to have take like uh, leadership and others who just want to be part of it. So um, sounds like really uh, challenging yeah. there, but it's it's very cool. Yeah. Really, I think it's it's really cool. Um, and it's, another, it's the hardest yeah, part. Please, I, I think it's the what? hardest part. The community, the community supply chain is is mm -hmm. because you have to set it up from the farming cooperatives to the treatment center to the carpentry um, uh, and, and, you know, what level of involvement you want the beneficiaries to have. So it's, it's the community aspects are quite complicated, but we've seen that in the recent change to our business model where we are building different types of homes with different commercial models behind them. Uh, there's incentives in place which help us um, organize communities and organize teams on the ground um, in a very autonomous way. Um, Cool. And of course, probably uh, as an organization, you can help with like, uh, once they have like products or services, you can help them also find like clients um, internationally, let's say, let's say example, Bamboo, right? Um, and that's uh, added value for sure, because locally searching for clients internationally is kind of a uh, uh, mission impossible. And if, if you have a, a like an NGO helping there for sure, this will be a huge advantage. Correct, correct. We we go from being their donors and supporters to being their sales and marketing team. Yeah. Uh, and and we, we help them do the business development, but then they execute and operate. Um, so, so we provide that, that sales channel and the brand. And um, it's, it's good to see actually the local community through a more um, uh, commercial model take more ownership of projects because mm -hmm. They have the tools to generate the revenue because we sell different types of bamboo homes. We have bamboo homes for people who live in extreme poverty. So they self deliver those homes for themselves because they're homeless. But we mm -hmm. also have more modular bamboo homes for more wealthy families. So those mm, cool. bamboo homes, they generate profit. The profit gets reinvested in the community. So we help them find those different opportunities and organize the, the business framework. But then they're the mm -hmm. ones running it from start to finish. That's quite an interesting uh, aspect here you mentioned, uh, Nicola, because normally most organizations currently or sadly just focus on like uh, bamboo homes for the people who can't afford it. And this does not help a lot locally for uh, the, the challenge with bamboo where people think it's a poor man's timber, right? So now that you do uh, have like a rather... Um, let's say a luxury version of the bamboo homes. People uh, do not associate bamboo homes just with people who can't afford, but they know like there's a wide range of, of options available. And uh, really, this is important, for, uh, I, I believe. So uh, well done there. <laughs> uh, because one of the challenges yeah. right in Latin America is that bamboo has been like... Uh, like everywhere where we have bamboo is misunderstood as, oh, it's bamboo, it grows everywhere. Uh, we can't use it because uh, it, it doesn't work well and it's just cheap, right? And uh, <laughs> challenge. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. We, we want to change the perception around the material. And um, ultimately, we have two main um, agendas. First of all, we want to decarbonize the built environment and use bio-based solutions like bamboo to create more sustainable housing. But the second thing we want to do is support the housing deficit and alleviate poverty. And the thing with sustainable construction is that today, it's mostly something for wealthy people. Um, you know, when, when you go into emerging economies, sustainability is a luxury that uh, most, most communities can't afford. So we want to democratize sustainable construction and use bamboo as a material that is available to all income classes, whether you're earning $2 a day or $2,000 a day, you can live in a bamboo house and it's built with 
um, similar uh, architectural elements, similar design principles, structural uh, techniques, um, different price points and levels of finish, but it's fundamentally the same supply chain and building methodology. Two questions here. Can you just shortly maybe share some info regarding the price points, like the, 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 the cheapest house and the luxury house, just to get an idea? What we're talking here, of course, it's not Germany, yeah. it's uh, Nicaragua, so uh, the, it's very different. But just to get an idea, maybe in US dollars, right. um, what are we talking about? Yeah, so we have we have three models. We have Kuna Emergency. Kuna Emergency is a home for extremely poor families or families affected by a, a climate disaster. So it's, a, it's, I would call it more a humanitarian shelter. Um, and we deliver that at a price point of $4,000. Um, and it can be assembled in, in a couple of days, um, $4,000 all in. Um, mm -hmm. Then there's Kuna Social, which is a low-income housing product, um, which is typically funded by microfinancing, government subsidies, and potential sweat equity from, from the beneficiaries. And, and those are delivered at a price point of $8,000 per home. Mm -hmm. And then there's Kuna Playa, uh, and Kuna Playa, is a more upmarket version of it, and it starts at twenty thousand dollars. But there's options to upgrade it, uh, increase the size, um, and and play with the finishes. So um, we we cover the full range, and um, for every Kuna Playa that we build, there's a, um, a sort of a pledge built into the cost of the Kuna Playa, which supports a Kuna emergency. So, so when cool. uh, an American, so cool. when an American, when a family of American tourists comes to Nicaragua, buys some land, and builds a Cuna Playa. For every Cuna Playa, we're also building a Cuna emergency for a Nicaraguan family who doesn't have a home. So cool. Really awesome approach here. Love it. And uh, you mentioned the, the, the technical, architectural, and uh, how the houses are built. So here you, you've innovated with something uh, rather interesting, uh, which is a, a bamboo adobe panel system, right? So you're, you're taking two existing technologies, <laughs> like classic bamboo housing and let's say classic adobe houses, and you've mixed that into a, a panel system, which is modular, as I understand. Is this kind of what it is? Or, or please yeah. tell us what the idea there is and how, the, um, uh, how this is also like, I think it's, it's kind of interesting because the adobe helps with the bamboo, where the bamboo is maybe um, like, difficult and more expensive to, to get it like in, in, in straight panels. The adobe being like like natural cement uh, works really well, right? Yeah, it's look, our, our, our big thing with um, with the bamboo adobe panel system is we wanted to create a construction system which was super simple, cheap, fast and replicable all mm -hmm. over the world in any area where bamboo grows. So it's it's, it's really, there's four components to it. You have bamboo poles and bamboo slats, which are just, um, you know, uh, dry assembled to, to create a, a panel. We then tend to use a, a chicken mesh. So the same wire that you use to keep chicken out of, out of the garden that's available anywhere and it's, it's very cheap. And then we use an, an, an adobe mortar, which is mostly made out of the local clay or local mud. Um, in Nicaragua, we use a lot of just local mud. We call it repeyo. It's mud, 2% cement, uh, a bit of ashes and, and other um, elements of, of soil. And um, you, you, you assemble all the panels in the workshop based on standardized design. Um, each Kuna social home, which is the ones we built in Nicaragua for now, um, are 14 panels per home. So we have nice. different tables where the panels get set up. I would say a team of eight people, including children, mothers, you know, volunteers, people who are not experiencing construction, eight mm -hmm. people can create two panels in one day. So, wow. and, and that's with no, no experience, very no. basic tools. So a team of skilled carpenters can assemble a whole house in a day in the workshop. Awesome. And then awesome. one, one day and a half to install it. So it's, it's um, uh, you know, when, when you asked me the question before around people believing bamboo is a poor man's material, um, what happened in Casa Congo was very unfortunate, but fortunate because we were hit by a hurricane um, right after we started building with bamboo and a mm -hmm. lot of homes were destroyed. But our structures in bamboo resisted the hurricane in Nicaragua. And so people came to see Casa Congo and they're like, oh, wow. So ba bamboo is a structurally resistant material and it's local. 
So it changed the minds of a lot of people who started believing more in the material potential. Um, the hurricane was devastating and, and it was very sad. But yeah, but that's quite interesting, uh, sad and, and, and good, as you said. Um, so, um, of course, yeah, it's, it's good to know that the, the houses are really like well built in bamboo. We know bamboo is super um, like flexible and, and all that. And yeah, thinking of the, the future where we have more like extreme weather climate situations, uh, everybody should get like uh, bamboo uh, houses, uh, which really are able to sustain that, of course. So you're, you're at the right place uh, doing the right thing, it seems like, Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's been a very challenging uh, journey. You know, I mean, I'm here at this expo talking you know, to you and, and, and sharing this amazing story, which I'll also be sharing tomorrow. But if I think about, you know, the fact that just a month ago I was in Nicaragua working on the project, um, you know, we have video calls and remote podcasts and internet here. And, and actually over there, you barely have electricity. You know, 90% of people live on dirt floors, don't have homes. There's a lot of complexity and, and emotional uh, challenges that you go through with, with the people to, to create these projects. And finally, we got over the first um, phase and now we're getting more funding. Uh, we're, we're starting to create new revenue streams. People are taking more independence and owning the solution. But let me tell you, it's been, it's been I, I, the, the most difficult project of, of my life. Um, and um, many times Saul, myself and, and other of the co-founders and local people, we wanted to quit. We're like, this is too difficult. Um, fundraising is incredibly difficult. Um, the climate conditions are very difficult. You know, we had everything lined up and then there's no electricity for a month. So the tools aren't working. It's, it's, uh, and then it starts raining for three months. So, you know, d doing these things in, in tropical countries and emerging economies is, is very, um, challenging. But challenging. It's, yeah. It's something we're very, we're very proud to have gotten to, to where we are and, it's just a pity I don't have a bamboo house to, to show you here because yeah. they're really they're they're really nice. You know, when, when, when my mother came to Nicaragua, when my mom came to Nicaragua the first time, she she came into these bamboo homes and I don't know what she was expecting because I told her it was low income housing and she walked in and the first thing she said is, Nikki, can I have one of these for my house? You know, <laughs> awesome. She, she so so it was like they're 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 cheap, they're nice, they're easy to yeah. assemble, they're fast and they're sustainable. So and healthy uh, also, you know, because it's natural yeah. materials. It's not like plastic or aluminium and all that stuff, which, which do uh, also affect the body and, and health of, of people living in those houses. So awesome. Um, so and, and uh, from my research, I've seen that Nicaragua has like lots of bamboo plantations. I think that's a positive aspect there because you do have uh, lots of raw bamboo, right? I'm not sure if it's giant bamboo or guadua or both or any other type. Maybe you can. Yeah, Sh Nica Nicaragua is abundant in bamboo, but it's very it's wild bamboo. There's no oh, um, no plantation. No, there's actually a couple of plantations in the Chontales area that are managed by a company called EcoPlanet, um, which are a large um, bamboo forestry management organization. Um, but aside from them, it's mostly wild crops. Um, it's not really structured or industrialized from a farming perspective. You have a lot of asper in the mountains near the coffee farms, and it's, it's Gigantoclo asper. I mean, it's very, very large bamboo. It's, it's very strong. Um, we work with Guadua, uh, uh, Angustifolia, and, um, and then there's, uh, Apus. There's a lot of Apus in Nicaragua, and then there's lots of other types of, um, of species, but we've mainly worked with Asper, Guadua, and, um, and Apus, and the homes we build are out of Guadua. We get it from Chontales. Chontales is a very poor area of Nicaragua, uh, which is mostly, uh, most of the land is dedicated to gold mines and, and, and to other sort of mining extraction businesses and the farmers there are very poor the land is degraded but for them bamboo is hope because by building homes we are stimulating their supply chain and we have a lot of small farm smallholder farmers that maybe have two hectares three hectares ten hectares and and they all get together and they they harvest the bamboo collectively um we were very fortunate to to have a partnership with don oscar ruiz who's our, our bamboo forestry expert from Colombia. He's been working in bamboo silviculture for over 40 years. So he came to Nicaragua 
and spent a month training the community around best practice in terms of, you know, how to profit, when to profit, how to handle it, the treatment processes. And, and um, that really helped set up another small social enterprise in a Nicaraguan farm that now has an opportunity to generate income um, and also to keep planting bamboo to, to help uh, restore their land. Awesome. I mean, mining um, regions are really one of the biggest challenges, uh, probably not just the soil which is depleted, but also community people who are like uh, used to a, a really difficult uh, environment and, and this mentality of like get, being a millionaire tomorrow, which almost never happens, of course, because it's it's a mining thing. Right. Uh, and uh, so, wow, that's that's that's. Uh, that's, I didn't know um, so much about Nicaragua, so I'm learning a, a lot about Nicaragua. Uh, sounds really like an interesting place. Um, I think uh, politically, it's like a, something like a, a, a long time dictatorship. I don't know if we can call it like that or, or if that's a situation. It's like semi-stable, stable system of the same ruler. Yeah, we, we prefer not to make any comments on the on, on, on the political system of, of Nicaragua. We we have good relationships with the local municipality. We have good relationships with the Minister of Environment, Marena. Um, actually, INVUR, which was the local institute of housing, contributed to our housing program by supporting the beneficiaries. Um, Nicaragua obviously has a complex history um, and a, a not simple political situation, but we we work very closely to the best extent that we can with the local institutions and communities. But um, we like to consider ourselves an apolitical organization. We're here to innovate, to bring sustainability to the built environment and to help families. Um, we are, we leave the government, do the government things. That's a smart, smart move there, I believe, Nicolas. Uh, we early mentioned the financial aspects of the, the Kuna case. So uh, I want to um, um, I mentioned that again. So you said they're like the, the entry level, which is the $2,000 euro uh, emergency housing. And then there is like the, the super uh, or, or like uh, luxury version, which was like something like 8,000, right? Um, and in between you have like more options or? Yeah, you, you are almost. Almost. Um, almost. So the, the, the starting, the, 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 the most basic version, Kuna emergency is 4,000. Mm -hmm. Then okay. Kuna Social is eight thousand, and then okay. Kuna Playa is twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Um, okay, okay, okay. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, are there any other uh, financial aspects you can share regarding? Um, I, I believe one of the interesting thing right now is um, how the the funding um, um, looks like. I mean, if if uh, just to get an idea, is it mostly like um, um, funding from, from the U.S. or are you also working with funding from, from Europe? I understand it's very different, uh, like legislation and, and also um, the, the, the funding um, kind of uh, uh, easy to fund or, or like also fund something or donate something and, and then, then um, pay less taxes, right? Depending on where you live. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's... We, we, we raise funds, uh, humanitarian fundraising through our NGO in Italy. And then the funds we raise in Italy are invested in infrastructure and training. So the, the, the funds that we raise in Italy, we've used them to build our workshop, to train the farmers, to buy tools, to uh, run training programs with the carpenters, to do research and development on, on, on the bamboo um, building methodology. So, so that's where the humanitarian fundraising comes into play. But then once it comes down to execution, we work either with local partners, uh, which could be local NGOs or government, uh, subsidies, uh, families. Even if you're in an extremely poor situation, we ask for a small, small, even if symbolic financial contribution. Um, and, and so that's how we started the project. We had, International fundraising done for purely humanitarian reasons, which created the infrastructure and then local partners that funded the homes. We we're also fortunate to work with Habitat for Humanity, which provided funding for the bathrooms and for training the community on how to maintain off grid sewer systems. Um, so it was really a, an army, I would say, of um, different stakeholders, public and private, making it happen. 
now that we've gone through this first phase and the project is uh, sustainable and the community is, is capable of running it on their own, we are now into this new business model where uh, we're a social business and we're in Nicaragua, we're opening a new hub in Mexico, and, and we're also looking to do some projects in Mozambique. And, and it's a more, I would say, traditional business model where we have revenue and we have cost. Um, and our only difference between us and a traditional general contractor that builds with mass timber is that we use all our profits to build homes for people who can't afford them. So um, we, are, we are now in this new hybrid model, but um, the initial way it started is I think we raised funds from 12 or 15 different entities. We also ran a very large crowdfunding campaign where we had over 300 people give $10, $20, $5, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, and anything was welcome. Um, then the families all put in $50, $100. Then ANF, which was a large Nicaraguan foundation, supported INVUR, which is the local government housing institute uh, I, I mentioned supported, the, the, the mayor supported, um, Habitat for Humanity supported, the Hilti Foundation supported. It was, um, you know, uh, it, it was really a lot of um, donors who, who came in to launch it. And, and now it's more um, streamlined. Wow, this this could be an amazing blueprint for others uh, trying to do something similar. So uh, I just want to share more details into that. Um, other organizations doing similar things on site could learn a lot about about how you manage to uh, to uh, successful uh, fund this like that. So uh, really, uh, pretty pretty awesome there again, <laughs> um, because uh, yeah. yeah, fundraising like. No money, no, uh, no, no, nothing, right? So it's it's super key <laughs> at the end. Um, also, I wanted to mention another thing which you um, said before, uh, which I think is kind of key, is that uh, the, even oh. the families have to pay something. Are we hear now something in the background? Yeah, there's background noise. In seven um, minutes, you have like the the panels. I heard he yeah. actually mentioned it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. Cool. So let's do a fast here. So you mentioned that even the the like for the emergency homes, the families pay something. I truly believe this is important because uh, it 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 makes them like they paid something for it, even if it's not like the the, the real price. But they they it's not free. It's not a gift. They did something. No, they no. paid something. So they have like this ownership. Um, um, mentality then, which should help them to to maintain it, to keep it well, to improve it, right? If you if you share something, ah, it was a gift. It's just a gift, right? And it's better if they have to pay even j just something. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 what I mentioned before. There there has to be skin in the game from the yeah. local beneficiaries and the community. Yeah. Um, for Kuna Social, uh, we 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 ask for a, a monetary contribution. And some families who can't put in the, the, the money, um, us as an NGO will will loan them. So we'll create a loan for their contribution and they'll pay it back over the three or six months duration of the project. Um, a lot of families also contribute with a lot of sweat equity. So we've mm -hmm. had a family, for example, this is an interesting case. It's a single mom and she has four kids. So she said, wow. I, I'm, I, I, I can't work on the house because my kids are, are little i i'm i'm busy with them and i don't have money so she got her cousins and her nephews and her brother and her friends to come work in the workshop for free for a certain amount of time and we counted the equity that her family provided as if it was a contribution to the project financial so so mm -hmm. but the, these are the kind of things that every family is going to want a different way to 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 they're, they're they want to participate but so we need to be flexible um, in, in opening up different ways for the community to contribute um, and, it, and being also very inclusive and understanding that not everyone's in the same situation. So, so we have to be flexible. But it's beautiful that you are able to be flexible and find solutions uh, 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 for that because, I mean, that's what it is after all. So the last thing before uh, uh, we have the conference starting at your side of the European Bamboo Expo in Germany um, uh, regarding the supply chain. So you're, you're creating a new bamboo, local bamboo supply chain there. Um, what is it you're, you're, um, you want to like, uh, sell probably, I would say out of my stomach, you're, you're going to try to sell bamboo 
uh, export bamboo poles maybe? Or at, at the moment, um, our supply chain is designed to support internal demand. Uh, we, we're not really into exporting products yet because just in Nicaragua, there's a million people who live homeless. So before we start um, dedicating local material to, to export, we want to prioritize the local material for the local people. And because of the fact that the tour tourism industry is growing in Nicaragua and in countries like Mexico, we actually don't see the need to export the bamboo because there's enough local demand at different price points that allows us to just dedicate all the bamboo from the farms to local projects. Um, and that's also more sustainable because we don't have to get into logistics derivative deri yeah. logistics derived emissions because I mean bamboo is sustainable, but then if you put it on a container and you send it from uh, Managua uh, all the way to to London, it, it's it's still sustainable, but it, it changes things a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's it's more like of an internal um, uh, supply chain uh, which you're kind of uh, building from scratch, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, from we say from farm to wall. There's yeah. four key nodes on the supply chain. There's the smallholder smallholder farmer community who plant and, and harvest bamboo. There's the treatment facility. Um, there's the prefabrication workshop. And um, last but not least, the school, or let's say the, the overall platform that keeps everything together from an educational perspective, does the research, uh, works with lo local government from a coding perspective, uh, a building code perspective and getting the go. permits. So these are the four um, components. And actually in Nicaragua, we have four different communities or four different groups of people working on each piece of, of the supply chain. Whilst in Mexico, we're going to consolidate it more into just one area and create more of a, of a hub. Yeah, you mentioned Mexico, you mentioned uh, uh, Africa, uh, and uh, so you're, you're going internationally. Yeah, we, well, at the moment, our, our, our core focus is, um, is Nicaragua and, and our next step is Mexico in, in 2025. Um, we believe Mexico is ripe for bamboo housing because of the, 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 the demand for, for housing in, in Mexico, which is widely unmet, and, and the supply. As I mentioned, the bamboo industry is very mature in Mexico, and, and there's access to skilled labor, and it's a manufacturing-centric economy. So for us, Mexico is our next big destination, and, and Nicaragua and Central America is, is where it all started. Um, what we're seeing, though, is now lots of communities are reaching out to us and saying, can you come help us set up the same supply chain in our part of the world? Um, and that's what happened in Mozambique. That's what's happening in Jamaica. And so we are now thinking of a, of a way to grow internationally, but in a way that is um, lean. Like we don't want to become this gigantic property developer all over the world building homes. We like to think of ourselves more as a platform, connecting different communities, sharing knowledge, helping set the supply chain up, but then let people run each version of their kuna in whatever way they want to run it because local materials are different, local talent is different, um, the market conditions are different. So we don't expect this to become like a, I don't know, a giant Starbucks of bamboo housing, right? Like each, each, each area and each region is going to have their own identity, their own program. And we just want to be the ones who enable this and, and, and help communities and public and private stakeholders come together with architects and, and engineers to, to make it happen. Wow, this sounds absolutely exciting, Nicola. And anybody who wants to stay up to date, they can go on kazakongo.org. You have a newsletter there where they can subscribe or contact you directly in case they want to collaborate, right? So um, also, yeah. um, I, I believe also at the European Bamboo Expo, maybe are, are you looking for collaborations or more uh, uh, to share the story with the people who want to what is your, your main goal uh, uh, on the Bamboo Expo here in Germany uh, right now? Yeah, definitely here to meet people, share the story. I'm here to learn. There's lots of people doing very exciting projects. And as I said, it, it's interesting to see how different technical experts and communities are tackling the same problem and using bamboo in different ways. So just now I saw another solution, which has a very smart way of using very small bamboo poles and, and, and creating structural elements at a very low price point. So, in, and, and then I saw another um, provider who's uh, uh, really smart when it comes to carbon credits and generating income from carbon credits from bamboo plantations. So 
I've only been here for an hour and I've already learned two new things and met three new people. So I, I'm really here to learn, to share and, and, you know, anyone out there who wants to help build bamboo homes for everyone, um, please come see us. Exactly. Uh, come see uh, Nicolas at the European Bamboo Expo or uh, go on the website kazakongo.org. And um, uh, also, if you want to continue to listen to interesting bamboo related entrepreneur like Nicola, don't forget to uh, subscribe to Think Bamboo on YouTube or thinkbamboo.org on the website. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, Nicola. I think you have to run to the uh, conference, which is happening in like zero minutes over there. Um, thank <laughs> you a lot for your time. Uh, amazing. I hope we can uh, talk again later on more details because I think we would have like more material to talk about regarding your future plans. Um, this whole supply chain uh, is, is super key. Um, so you're tackling something which has lots and lots and lots of, of gr growth potential um keep up the good work man great talking to you thank you appreciate the the conversation um yeah the music starting um the next talk is actually going to be on carbon credits and i'm uh very interested in it um but it's, it's it's been a pleasure jj and let's connect later um and yeah let's build bamboo homes economies ecosystems and communities for everyone thank you awesome thank you very much so just